you are a small business owner, contractor, or freelancer operating through a limited company, then this video will help you understand how you can get a company car through your limited company and how to do it tax efficiently. This video covers, should you lease or buy a car through your limited company, the limited company tax implications of a company car, the personal benefit in kind tax implications of a company car, and finally a useful company car benefit in kind tax calculator. I'm Tony D'Angelo of the Accounting and Tax Academy. Make sure you subscribe for real quality advice from real qualified accountants. This video applies to you company directors and employees who are thinking about getting a car through your limited company. It does not cover commercial vehicles, taxis or hire vehicles, which we will cover in a future video. And to keep things simple and shorter, we are not explaining the fuel benefit charge, although this should always be considered in a company car scenario. For many years, when the only two car options were petrol or diesel, the perks of a company car through your limited company were long gone and quite literally taxing. However, since the advent of hybrid plug-in electric vehicles and fully electric cars, the UK government is now encouraging motorists to get one of these through generous tax breaks and even grants. Yes, grants, you can get a grant of up to a maximum of £3,000 for a plug-in low emission vehicle. So follow the link in the description below for more details on this. The first thing to consider here is your cash flow. Let's say, for example, you're looking to acquire a Tesla Model S, which retails at around about £80,000 from new. Your company will need £80,000 in liquid cash or you will need to arrange a finance payment plan for instalments. And the latter is subject to a finance company lending to your limited company, which depends on a lot of various factors. From an accounting and tax perspective, your limited company will be the legal owner of the car and it will become an asset of the company. A lease plan is quite different. In accounting terms, it will be known as what's called an operating lease. So in other words, you have use of the car under the terms of the lease for a period of time, quite often three years, and at the end of the term, you simply hand the car back and the lease expires. The car is not an asset of your company and it is what's known as an off-balance sheet item. If your limited company buys the car outright, then it becomes an asset of the company. The limited company will get corporation tax relief through what is known as capital allowances. In tax terms, this is the equivalent of depreciation, although capital allowance rates often differ from depreciation calculations. And as usual, the lower the CO2 emissions, the more favorable the capital allowances rates are gonna be. If your limited company enters into an operating lease agreement, then the monthly lease payments are an allowable expense and get corporation tax relief as incurred. One word of warning with a lease vehicle, from April 2021, if the CO2 emissions are greater than 50 grams per kilometer, then the company tax relief becomes restricted to 85% of the monthly lease amount. Now, this is where it gets very interesting. For any expenditure to be allowable through your limited company for corporation tax relief, it needs to be wholly and exclusively for the purpose of your business. For example, a laptop can quite easily meet this criteria even if you do use it incidentally for personal use. A car is no different. The intent has to be that it is used for the purpose of your business. And with company cars, if there is an element of personal use, even just one mile, which in the majority of cases there is, then a benefit in kind tax charge is applied to the user personally. This tax charge is based on what is known as the P11D list price of the car, multiplied by the CO2 emissions benefit in kind rate, multiplied by your personal tax rate. Now, this sounds very complicated, but don't worry. We've prepared an example calculation to show you how this works. Now, there is a HMRC company car tax calculator you can use, although I do warn you, it's not the most user-friendly and a bit clunky, but it is the most complete calculator and it's straight from the horse's mouth HMRC and produces exactly the right results. So let's run through an example so you can get an idea. 
Let's take a Mitsubishi Outlandia PHEV, which stands for Plug-in Hybrid Electric Vehicle, 2.4 design, four-wheel drive also as our example. The list price of the vehicle is £36,825. Its CO2 emissions is 46 grams per kilometer, and the electric battery range on a full charge is 28 miles. So let's put these details into the calculator. First of all, you need to select the relevant tax share. Now, this is important as rates differ from one tax share to the next. And in addition, if you only have access to the company car partway through a tax share, then the car benefit in kind charge is actually reduced. Now, the optional remuneration applies to employees who have been given the offer of a company car or cash equivalent allowance. We'll click no for the purpose of this calculation as we're not really covering this point in this particular video. The number of days the car is unavailable pertains to periods when the car is perhaps in for servicing or maintenance or genuinely unavailable for justifiable reasons. This again reduces the car benefit in kind charge. Now, as an employee or even a director employee of your company, you can make capital contributions if you buy the car through your company. So of the £36,825, you can make a maximum of £5,000 in a capital contribution or less, and that will actually again reduce the car benefit in kind charge. Likewise, the ongoing contribution to private use. If in the year you say, for example, contribute £500 to the ongoing private use, that again will reduce the car benefit in kind charge. Now enter the date first registered. So we're gonna select the 6th of April, 2020 onwards for this example, and then the fuel type. And in this example, because it's a PHEV, it falls under category A, all other cars. The engine capacity we know is 1401cc to 2000cc. The next thing you want to do is put in the approved CO2 emissions figure. And we know in this instance, it's 46 grams per kilometer. And by putting that in, a new box appears and you can see it's called zero emission mileage. Now, this appears because any sort of CO2 emissions between one and 50, then the next question that will be asked is how much can the car do in terms of mileage on a single charge? And that's why that box appears. And what you'll find out is if I put, let's say a figure of 52 in the CO2 emissions figure box, that zero emission mileage box will actually disappear. Now, the next question is, car does not have a CO2 emissions figure. Well, in 99% of cases, most cars or certainly new cars will certainly have that figure. So you should be able to get that and put it into the relevant box. In this instance, we're gonna say that your employer does not pay for private fuel and there's no fuel provided for an optional remuneration arrangement. So no in both of those boxes. Once done, you click on next. And here are the results. You can see the car benefit charge at the top at 2020-21 is £4,176. Now that's not the amount of tax you pay, that's just the car benefit charge. The tax is based on whether you're a basic rate taxpayer or a higher rate taxpayer. And you can see in these boxes here, if you're a basic rate taxpayer, the actual company car benefit in kind tax to you per se becomes £835.20. And if you're a higher rate payer, it's £1,670.40 and there's a few more details just summarizes the whole calculation here now what i've also done is put the same calculations into the comcar.co.uk company car tax calculator and you can see clearly here it's the mitsubishi outlander phev 2.4 and the results are coming out pretty similar to the tax calculator. The difference is in the original tax calculator from HMRC, we actually denoted that 20 days of the car is not available. And in this particular calculator, unfortunately, you cannot do that. But the good thing about this tax calculator is if you scroll down, it gives you a few more details. Well, actually quite a few more details than the HMRC tax calculator. It summarizes certain tax components. It tells you what the electric battery range is and some vehicle details. And the most important one here is the corporation tax. You can clearly see here, it says 100% FYA. And if you recall earlier on in the video, I mentioned capital allowances. And if you do decide to buy the car as opposed to leasing the car, then that is exactly what your company would get. And 100% FYA denotes a first year allowance. So it's the most favorable type of capital allowance that you can get. 
Now, this is a good question. You can claim back 100% of the VAT on a new car, providing it is being used 100% for business use only. No personal use at all. So for example, pool cars, which I explain in the next section. If there is any personal use, again, even just one mile, then you will not be able to claim back the VAT at all. If you are leasing a car, then again, you can claim back 100% of the VAT if there is no personal use. The good news here is that if there is personal use, then you can still claim back 50% of the VAT. There are two options for you here. Number one is to buy what is known as a pool car. Now this is a normal car and it's made available to all employees, parked at your business's premises and not available for personal use for anybody. And this can be any type of car, a diesel, petrol, hybrid, PHEV or electric. Estate agents are a good example of businesses that use pool cars. If you're a small one or two person limited company business and work from home, then to be honest, this could be quite difficult to prove to HMRC, but not completely impossible. Number two is to buy a lease a fully electric or hybrid car with a mileage range of 130 plus on a single charge. Now, I am no expert in cars, but I do know some of the big marquees such as Volvo, Ford, BMW, Mitsubishi and Audi sell both electric and long range PHEV vehicles. In the 20 to 21 tax year, there is no benefit in kind charge to you personally, and it rises to 1% in 21-22 and 2% in 22-23. Now, these are low figures, and in my professional opinion, these kind of tax rates will not be around for too many years. If you're not looking to get a 100% electric car or a hybrid with a mileage range in excess of 130 and need a car for some business use, then using a personal vehicle and claiming a mileage allowance through your business is quite favorable. We have done a separate video on this, so click on the card above. Purely approaching this question from a tax perspective, I can only really come up with two valid reasons. Number one, if you are genuinely going to use a car for business purposes only. So a pool car is the best example here, where it is made available to all employees and stays on the business's premises with no personal use by anybody. Or number two, if it is a 100% electric car or hybrid car with 130 mile range on a single charge.